Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be discussing or I'm going to tell you what I believe is the best all-in-one flight controller out on the market till this date and for a couple reasons. Now the flight controller that I'm going to be discussing is the HLRC F4 Flame. Now there's plenty of good ones also but this one kind of has the edge over actually I believe all of them um, and let me tell you why now. So I have around I think four or five builds with this board and recently we built this on the channel and I've gone ahead and chose the HLRC F4 Flame for a couple reasons. One, it's compatible with just a crap setup like a crappy ESC and motor. So if I really don't know how the components are going to perform I stick this on there and I'll tell you why in a bit. Uh, this board also is very good for waterproofing. There isn't connectors. Everything is just soldered on and it's just beautiful. Now, this board is the best, in my opinion, under a couple reasons. One, the built in filtration is good. It's not perfect, but it's very good and it gives it the edge over other flight controllers. Now, what do I mean by it gives it the edge over other flight controllers? Okay, so for example, we have, let's just bring here the Sky Zone. The Sky Zone does not have any filtration for the VTX and it gives the direct power from the battery to the VTX, thus increasing the chances of noise and you're very likely to see noise on that. However, you know, you can fix that noise with low ASR capacitor, possibly a voltage regulator if that wasn't enough, and do a lot of things to get it going if it was noise. But the same setup that was super noisy on this, you had it on the HLRC F4 Flame, um, usually just a tiny low ESR capacitor would fix that for you because it does have the it does it does half of the filtration for you already and um, it was one of the first uh, flight controllers that actually talked about the EMI or was it the EMF the electromagnetic field or electromagnetic interference and that does happen from the volt the current going back and forth through the wires and it creates some kind of magnetic field which interferes with the components which creates issues that are almost unfixable uh, but that rarely does happen now because I don't think there's that much current going through our quads just yet but this had it this was stating that it had a fix for that and um, I've seen it just absolutely reliable and absolutely beautiful now let's talk about a all-in-one flight controller with a voltage regulator we're not talking about the Matek just yet we're gonna go into the Matek a 405 why choose this guy over that now, for example, this guy's on here had a 12 volt regulator, crappy ESCs, noisy motors. Now, there's something called a VTX blackout, which is when the voltage, you know, we have voltage spikes and voltage drops on uh, throttle changes and on flips and rolls. If the voltage drop goes down too low, below 12 volts, maybe to 10 volts, then the 12 volt regulator would stop supplying power to the VTX, thus giving you a blackout for a couple seconds until the voltage comes back up and that issue is very scary and um, I've, I've had that issue many times before where I've ruined quads uh, because of it. Now this one, a voltage blackout is non-existent unless your battery just blows up uh, because you know you're taking the direct power from the battery and it has filtration plus the battery never drops below seven volts and i mean you you don't I mean, you're getting it straight from the battery so you'll never have that unless your are like i said unless your battery blows up or your vtx blows up that's a different story but overall this does have that filtration also in place for you which is absolutely beautiful so you know it's even better for your components even without a low ESR capacitor than most of the flight controllers that are in the market because of all that filtration it has it's not the best filtration but it's it is the best in the all the flight controllers that are on the market yes but um it's actually no it is very good it's very good it does half of the filtration if not all uh, for you with this flight controller and I do highly recommend and strongly recommend you stock up on some of these because especially if you're new if you're new um, this will save you a ton load of headache for this flight controller the only issue that you might have is noise and it's one tiny low ESR cap should clean this right up. On others, you might have to put one on each ESC and one on the board, and you might have to put an LC filter and voltage regulator. This one, you don't have to do jack shit. Just put one low ESR and you're good to go if you ever needed that. And we did need that here, and we did that, and it's just beautiful. Now, let's compare it with the Matek F405 flight controller. Now, this, this flight controller is an absolute beast. However, this flight controller, I don't want to say it's not reliable. I'm going to say it's not compatible with specific... Uh, ESC motor combos. However, this one is absolutely compatible with whatever crap you stick on it. It'll take it. Um, all you probably have to do is put a low ESR cap and go ahead and fly it. So this is why I really love this. This one, you have to be very precise with the ESC motor combo because if you do have some kind of, it's a very noisy setup, it'll affect the gyro and give you the yaw twitch of death, which is 
almost impossible to get rid of without adding a low ESR capacitor to each ESC and possibly the board itself also. So the HLRC F4 flame beats this also in terms of compatibility and um, yeah, it's just all around a very good all-in-one flight controller. Now I do have experience with this. I've been using this for over, I think three months now and never had an issue, none whatsoever. It's just perfect, it flies. And you know, let's just talk about some of the specs because the specs obviously are very important. Um, Betaflight OSD, current sensor, voltage sensor, well, it's part of the Betaflight OSD. Uh, what else does it have? It has the filtration that none of them have and um, it's an F4 processor, it does everything. So overall, this is a very good board. I do highly recommend it for beginners and for people who've been in this hobby for a while. This is, I consider this the, the you know, the, the most easiest flight controller to set up in the world in terms of issues to happen after you finish setting it up because it's just, there's almost non-existent, the issues for this are almost non-existent unless you probably, you know, had a short circuit somewhere, but that's a whole different story. But I'm just saying if you did everything proper, um, whatever combination you use, you're going to be good to go. And um, this is why I tend to go for this guy. Especially if I don't know the hardware that I'm going to be using or the components that I'm going to be using, I definitely stick this guy on. For example, our waterproof build. Why did I bring an HDLR CF4 flame? One, it's absolutely beautiful to waterproof because there's no connectors and everything's soldered on. And another thing is because I know it's reliable, I'm not going to have any issues with it. And if I did have an issue, it's an absolute simple fix, which is just one low ESR capacitor and it would be just noise. However, it does half of, half of, if not all of the filtration already from the board itself. So, you know, I don't think you can go wrong. And plus, it's only like 35 bucks. So, uh, this is a hell of a deal. Um, but back when it came out, I think I bought them for, I think they were like 50 or 60 bucks. I don't remember. But they were a hell of a lot more expensive than $35. So, right now, I'm currently going to go stock up on some of these. And while I was stocking up, I just thought, hey, why, why not just make the video? I'm pretty much ready for it now since I've tested most of the flight control. There's other flight controls that I've tested on the channel if you're new here. Um, you can go ahead and see that. I've done the bench testing also on this guy. This guy performed very well. Um, and you really can't go wrong with him. I really don't. I can, I can easily uh, recommend him uh, without an issue here. It's, it's just, it's that good. And, well, that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope I helped you out there. I really hope you can make a great decision because of this video and to kind of understand the flight controls. I will have another video coming on all the flight controllers and what are the pros and cons of each and uh, why I would choose something over this and, and all that kind of stuff. That'll be upcoming next. Uh, but I just quickly thought I would really make this video because I think I'm ready for it now and I've been using it for a while and it's time for it. So, overall, um, this is my favorite. It's not just my favorite. It is the best uh, F4 flight controller all-in-one F4 flight controller in my opinion and from the ones that I've used on the channel and um, And well, that's it guys. So I really hope I helped you out there And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care